Okay, let's turn to book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. We're going to look at verses 13 and 14. Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. The title of the message is, Many churchgoers are on their way to hell. Many churchgoers are on their way to hell. Many churchgoers, I might include you, are on their way or on your way to hell. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13. The Bible says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Brother Jay, can you please pray for the message? change inside out. Yes. We ask you that you would protect each and every one of us from those attacks and those, Lord God, who are not saved, but that you will open their minds to the gospel so that today will be the day of their salvation. Amen. Make them uncomfortable until they get saved. Yes. We thank you and love you. Please protect us from devil's attacks. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 If you haven't in the ministry, and if you ever participated in any of the public ministry, such as you know, street preaching, visitation, or just you know, one-on-one, -on -one, wherever you're at, one thing that you'll get to experience, quote unquote, is that a lot of people, when you ask them if you're saved or are you saved, they'll just say, I go to church. Right. You know, even past Friday when we were doing street preaching, you try to talk to somebody, and first thing they say is that, I go to church. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I go to church, okay. A lot of people go to church. You know, I didn't ask you if you went to church, right? right? I mean, are you saved? Right, exactly. But yeah. their idea is that, you know what? I go to church, that means that, you no, know, probably, you know, none of them have assurance. No. Right. Probably, I'm going to heaven. As we, see it in our verses today. When it comes to spiritual salvation, many, many people, many, many people will not get it. What does that mean? Many, majority, will be burning in hell. And let's just stay in the chapter. Let's go to verse 21. The Bible says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work in equity. You, know, you need to get saved Amen. according to the Bible. Yes. According to the right time or right age. In the Bible, Amen. you have to rightly divide the word of truth, which means that in church age, we get saved by doing works? No. Do we get saved by speaking in tongues? No. Do we get saved by coming to church? No. no. Do we get saved by praying, you know, early in the morning every day? No. no. Do we get saved by, you know, looking at a synagogue somewhere, you know, 90 degrees and bow down five times a day? No. Never. Do you get saved by going to an idol and then saying something over and over 40 times? No. no. Do you get saved by standing at the corner, holding some literature for five hours, oh. doing nothing? <laughs> or No. I mean, do you get saved by going under the water or outside the water, wow. playing with the water? No. <laughs> you only get saved by, you know, accepting Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Amen. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ during this church age. It's sad to see that majority, because Bible says it, 
Majority of the churchgoers, majority of the people who profess faith are going to burn in hell. It's been like that since the beginning of time. And it's been like that right now. And it's going to be like that in the future. A lot of people will say, that's too harsh. How can a loving God send a soul, maybe a 10-year-old who knows, you know, good and evil, right? Who knows sin and could understand that, commit sin willingly, have a free will. How can God send that person to hell? Because God has already shown his love. God has given the solution. God has, you know, sent his only begotten son. And he paid for our sins on Calvary. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. It's a past tense. You know, don't expect God to say that I love you at the judgment, right? right? At the white throne judgment that, oh, yeah, you know, God, show me your love right now. God says, I already did. Yes. I mean, every tongue will be shut, and then they'll be confessing the Lord. And those, unfortunately, many of them will be churchgoers. Yes. How sad it is, you know, this day and age. Every single person that, who says, I go to church, majority of them you can't trust whether they're saved or not. Right. Because they can't give a clear testimony of salvation. Right. I mean, how do you know you're going to heaven? You know, I go to church. I, tell me more. Right. Uh, you know, I prayed a prayer. Oh, okay. You know, maybe. So what are you trusting to get you out of hell? I'm like, you know, I have to tell you. you know, it's going to be a long story. I'm like, I don't know. Why do I need to? How does salvation take you such a long time to explain to anybody? You know? Hey, let's grab a seat, you know, it goes, yeah. You know, when I was like going to church, suddenly at nighttime one day, you know, I saw a vision, you know, the heaven opened up, and you know, just like that painting, that finger touching each other, like that experience like happened to me. Literally, God from heaven started talking to me, right? Johnny boy, you know, you're my son, you know, you are coming to me. After you die, you know, I'm like, yeah, that's why I'm safe, right? Or someone says, I was praying, and suddenly, you know, the cross was moving. The doorknob was, you know, blood was, you know, coming down from the doorknob. Yeah. These things are true stories. Those are the testimonies of people. And some people say, you know what? God suddenly came into me. You know, a lot of people don't even know how to receive the Holy Ghost, right. right? They're saying that, you know what? You know, I received a you know, fiery baptism of Holy Ghost. Oh, no. You know, they don't even know what that means, right? right. You know, I mean, you're asking for it. Yeah. You know, fiery baptism, you're going to just burn in hell, right? right? I mean, that's what it is, fire, right? Yes. You know, but they don't know the doctrine. And they think that now, you know, I'm so zealous. A lot of, there are a lot of, you know, how should I say, fake, fraud, missionaries out there. Yeah. All they do is that, okay, come to our camp. Yeah. Instead of, you know, giving them the gospel, you know, they give them food, they give them, you know, clothes, and they give them good works. Right. Yeah. And then they tell them about their experiences. Experiences. That's why this day and age, what is really growing fast? You know, charismatic. Yeah. You know, that's growing super fast. Right. Assembly of God, well, growing super fast. You know, what are they mostly trusting? They're trusting their feelings. They're trusting, you know, the experiences to go to heaven. And they're all great churchgoers, right? Yeah. If you meet them, you know, person to person, yeah. right? They have good personality. But if you tell them that you can only go to heaven by trusting Jesus Christ, and if you tell them, if you trust in tongues, if you trust in your visions, seeing Christ in your dreams, which yeah. is the devil, Amen. right? Then they suddenly become this, you know, how should I say? You know what happens? You know, if, you, if a German and you know, Jewish person is talking to each other, not knowing their nationality, yeah. and suddenly they tell their nationality to each other, you know, they're the biggest enemies. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they turn into this biggest enemy. You know, why are you so angry 
when I tell you, according to the word of God, the way you're headed, even if you go to church seven, seven days a week, you're on your way to hell. Yes. Right? Something's not right. right. You know, something's not right in you. But if you feel that way, there's still hope. Yes. You know? I mean, there's still that convicting heart in you. Maybe your conscience is telling you that's not the right way. I mean, seriously. Jesus Christ, you heard it before. Gospel says, know that you're a sinner on your way to hell. Believe that Jesus is God who died for your sins and just receive him as your Lord and Savior. That's it. Amen. But you're like, oh man, that's not enough. That's not enough. Many churchgoers say, that's not enough. Now, are you one of those persons out there? That's not enough. No. What is enough then? Right. You have to keep the Every law in the Bible, that's enough. And then you'll never be able to do it. No. You can't do it even a single day. Right. You know, without thinking about anything that's ungodly. How can you go a week without thinking about anything ungodly, right? right? Especially in this day and age. You have billboards everywhere, sinful billboards. Yes. You have news you hear all the time. Even if you don't want to hear it, you hear it, yes. right? You listen to bad, worldly music when you're pumping gas somewhere, yes. right? Yeah. You're just walking and you hear bad music everywhere. because music's so loud, right? How can you try to justify your own self in front of Almighty God when he has given you solution? And one of the... Main reason, number one reason why many church schools are on their way to hell is because, plain and simple, they don't believe in the Word of God. They don't believe in the perfect Word of God. They don't believe it. Literally, we believe it. King James Bible, 1611. If you don't believe in the perfect Word of God, how can you have assurance that you're going to heaven? How can you... Be 100% sure that you're not going to hell. Mm -hmm. Many people, I mean, I preached on it, you know, maybe a few weeks ago or a few months ago. They think that it's just a good translation. Yeah. I mean, they think, you know, all the Bibles that came after originals is uninspired against the Word of God. You know, we're going to look at it. You know, unpreserved. It's just human beings, you know, writing it. Yeah. They don't believe in perfect God. If you don't believe in the perfect word of God, you don't believe in perfect God. That's right. Right? right? If you don't believe in perfect God, then nothing in this world is certain. No. Yeah, nothing certain. If you don't, I mean, yeah. I mean, death, taxes, you know, all those things, right? But... If you don't believe in the perfect word of God, you go to church. How do you open the Bible and not believe everything it says? Right? right? They're like, oh, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God in Psalms 9.17. Oh, that's not me. Mm. You know? hey, it doesn't apply, right? Wow. No, 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 no. You know? It's like, oh, abstain from all appearance evil. No, 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 no. You know, some evil is okay. You know, the... One of the wicked, the worst parents are out there. My children need to experience things in order to grow. How stupid can you be? Yeah. You want your child to become a drug addict? Yeah. You want your child to have, you know, unplanned pregnancy? Yeah. Right? You want your child to become a, you know, smoker, gambler? And then you're like, oh, yeah, after they experience it, you know, they become a real man and woman. You know, the mentality is completely wrong. It is. I mean, this day and age, think about it. Uh, I mean, as a Bible-believing Christians, we are to love Jewish, as a Jewish people, Amen. Israel as a nation, right? And many churchgoers, believe it or not, they hate Israel. Wow. I mean, you go out there from, you know, obviously, Catholics, they do have a church, right? Mother church. They go to church, you know, Presbyterian, Wesleyans, you know, Methodists, you know, everybody, like, they go to their church course, right? Yes. But why do they hate the nation of Israel? I mean, you don't believe in the word of God, that's why. Amen. When I hear that type of, you know, testimony from you or words from you, I mean, you probably need to really check your salvation. Yes. Right? Do you really think that you could go to heaven 
when you don't even have a final authority to go on. And your final authority is always usually the feelings. Feelings and feelings and feelings, right? If you are someone who has been on the fence where it's hard to believe the word of God, right? Yeah, I mean, that's why there's a thing called faith. Yeah, but the word of God, I mean, it's so scientific, Amen. right? Yes. All the prophecies came true of a one man, yes. 40 plus prophecies already. And there's a lot more that's going to happen. Yeah. That's like a one to the, you know, I mean, the words, I, there's no actual word, I don't think. You know, when there's like a 60 zeros after one, <laughs> right? And I uh, recently learned like what? Quintillion has like a 16 zeros. But well, forget it, this one has like a 60, like some of them 142 to the one. Yeah. And it all happened. Nobody could deny it. Right. Then why don't you believe it? Yeah. You, don't, you, know, you don't want to believe in the word of God? Then you're telling God, you know what? I don't think you're perfect. And I don't know about my eternity. Hell. Yeah. You're just like throwing it out there. You know, this day and age, the world's become so wicked that, you know, we have a university called USC in California, right? When this anti-Semitist, you know, Muslim girl says, you know, and I hate Israel, I hate Israel, right? And then she wants to speak in front of people, right? And the university, I don't know USC too much, our kids go there a lot, you know, but they stood for the right thing. All right. You know, it's a dissension, you're gonna create animosity amongst people. And they're the one who says, love each other. Yeah. You know, right. with, a, with always a parenthesis, right? Yeah. You know, right. you can't be that person when it comes to word of God. Amen. You can't just only believe the parts that you like. Right. Where Jesus loves you, God loves you, God is love. You can't just believe those parts. No. You know, you got to oh. believe the part it says, you know, hell's real. Yeah. You know, God's going to send you straight down to hell. Right? Amen. If you don't know according to what the Bible says. Let's look at, you know, how we could rebut those critics. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. That's why there's no preaching about hell this day and age on the pulpits. They don't want to offend anybody. And above all, they don't even believe in the perfect word of God. All these people are, you know, standing on the pulpits everywhere, these pastors so-called, they're afraid to preach about hell. Yes. Many times they're afraid to go there. Mm. Many yeah. times they don't know if they're going to end up there. Yeah. Why? Because they don't have assurance. Yeah. Because they've been taught from these Christian colleges out there that only original is perfect. No. Yeah. yeah. Then how are you going to have a, you know, for example, you had a bad day today. You committed a lot of sin. You committed 10 sins, but you only confessed nine sins. Other one, you can't remember, yeah. you know? You just can't remember. And like, oh, no, don't kill me, Lord. Today, if I die without confessing that one sin, I'm going to burn in hell, you know? So please don't kill me today. I mean, what kind of a life is that as a Christian? So-called. You have no assurance. Right. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14. Now let's start from verse 12. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. So, you know, on another note, if you want to live godly, you are going to suffer persecution. So as a Christian, if you're not facing any persecution in your life, you're not living godly. Right. Simple as that. Yeah. Oh, what do you mean? <laughs> I'm telling you what the Bible says. If you're trying to do right things, you're going to get persecution from your family. Right. You're going to get persecution from your friends. You're going to get persecution from your strangers. You're going to get persecution from your government. You're going to get persecution from everybody. Yes. Devil, the world, and the flesh. Yeah. But if you've been living such a cozy life, past few weeks, past few months, then you haven't done anything for the Lord. Yeah. You know, you are backslidden, compromising Christian. You know, like, you know, it's a, such a wonderful story. John Wesley, people who consider the most holiest man after Apostle Paul in many Bible-believing circles, 
I mean, he wasn't getting persecution for a while. I mean, these guys are street preachers, by the way, during those days, Amen. riding their horses. So he got off the horse. And then he was praying to God. And then he got on his knees, and then he's praying to the Lord. You know, I need to know that, you know, I'm doing right. Because your word says, all that will live God in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And then right when he was about to end the prayer, someone threw a rock at him. You know? You know I, mean, I mean, I don't want you two guys to go out there and do that either, right? Just, just preach the gospel and you get persecution. Yes. Right? You know, when you're living so wicked, you're committing the same sins as everybody. And don't just like, don't go in front of the bar, get on your knees and praying. And then if someone throws a beer can at you and you think that's a persecution, right? You know, and then telling everybody, that, oh, how holy I am, you know, I do those things. No. I mean, if you live your daily life trying to live godly, then you will suffer persecution. Yes. Yeah. It's the right persecution. It can't be the wrong persecution. You've got to be wise about it, too. You can't be running into an LGBTQ parade, right? And then start blasting at everybody. Yeah. And that is not the right way to do it, right? You do it orderly, right? Amen. You know, don't suddenly go up to a person face to face so close trying to pick a fight, right? Yeah. You know, believe in Jesus Christ and pointing at their noses. And then you get hit on the face and you're like, oh, pastor, you know, I tried to live for God, witness. How, well, how did it happen? Oh, I, obviously you deserve it, <laughs> right? You did it the wrong way, right? Continue verse 13. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. We have so many evil people out there. Think yeah. about it. They're preaching what's right is wrong and what's yeah. wrong is right, right? Yeah. Especially on the pulpits. And verse 14, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Verse 15, so this is Timothy, right? Think about it. And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. Last time I checked, if the Bible says it's a scripture, Holy Scripture is the Word of God. I don't know what definition you need, right? Holy Scripture. Scripture. What more do you need, people? Right? I mean... Do you really need God to talk to you in your dreams? No. You will. The devil will do. Oh, yeah. The devil will do his best. Yeah. So, Timothy had the perfect word of God. Amen. Yes. And he was a copy. Yeah. We have perfect word of God, That's which right. is King James Bible. Yes. It's copy. You don't, if you're not going to believe it, I'm telling you, how can you get saved without believing the word of God? Cannot. Okay, it makes no sense. No. How can I believe that you're my father if I don't believe you're my father? Right? You know, yeah. even though there's a birth certificate, you know, there's all the proof. It's just you denying the truth. Right. Simply put, many churchgoers go to hell because they don't want to believe the truth. That's they don't want to believe the fact. Right. They don't want to believe what God told them. Let's continue, verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Amen. Inspiration, inspired by God. God used people to write the word of God. How hard is it to understand? I mean, you believe that speaking in tongues is good. You believe that, you know, doing all this Holy Spirit experience is good. But when it comes to the word of God, you can't believe it. Right. You're a hypocrite, yeah. right? Believe the whole thing. Maybe at least you get saved, you know. Amen. You might have wrong doctrine on those things. At least you believe every single word of God, and maybe you have chance by trusting only Jesus Christ to save your soul from hell, by, you know, as your Lord and Savior. And it's profitable for doctrine. Think about it. You know, a lot of people are messed up yes. because they have wrong doctrine yes. because they don't believe in the perfect word of God. Yes. What do they love to do? Cults. Take verses out of context, right? Yeah, sure. They just take it out. Yeah. You know, Matthew twenty four thirteen. You know, all that shall endure until the end shall be saved. You know. So they take it out of context. Yes. I mean, that's for tribulation folks. Yeah. Let's just go. Let's look at it. Matthew twenty four. Matthew twenty four. Yeah. Matthew twenty four. 
Matthew 24, verse 13. Matthew 24, verse 13. Many people use this verse to teach salvation by works. And you, you hear it and, or you've heard it. Hey, that's why you got to live a good life. Because you have to endure until the end. I don't know. I mean, baloney. Right. Because they don't know the right doctrine. Matthew 24, verse 13 says, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So if you just only use this verse, take it out of context, and people start questioning you. Oh, what does it mean I have to endure until the end? Oh, endure means that work is involved. Yeah. I have to do it. I have to stay faithful until the end, or else I'm not going to get saved. Right. And many folks are, many church schools are on their way to hell because they believe in such a wrong doctrine like this. But you know why they get stuck there? You know why we get stuck at places? Because we don't go forward. You just have to read more verses. I mean, Scripture itself interprets itself. Yeah, let's go to verse 21. Same chapter. It's not even different chapter. It's in the same chapter, and it's telling you when do you have to endure until the end. Verse 21, the Bible says, For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor, no, nor ever shall be. So it's... What period do we just saw? Great tribulation time. Wow. Then you have to endure until the end. It makes sense, Amen. right? It's, it's not church age. Thank God. It's totally different age, right? It's right after we get raptured up. Woo. Amen. So if you believe in the perfect word of God, you can't actually have some right doctrines. Yes. If you don't believe in the perfect word of God, Forget it. That's why, you know, is, it, is NIV still really popular? You know, I think there's New King James, NASB. Yeah. Bible only has two lines. There's a Catholic right. line, yes. and there's a Bible believer's line, which is King James Bible. NIV, NASB, New King James, they're all part of, you know, Catholic Bible line. Yeah, well. don't, stop complaining to me. Show me, show me. You study. Yeah. I mean... Are you going to tell someone, you know, when you're about to fall into a fiery, you know, lake of fire hell? Like, you tell me. If I'm you, I'll check it. My own. Right? Yes. If someone says, okay, eat this vitamin. Right? Wise person, eat this vitamin and you're going to live forever. But another person says, eat this vitamin and you're going to die tomorrow. Wise person will study. Which person, I mean, which person is right? Yes. Bible, different versions. You have to study. That's right. Yeah. And if you're going to be blindly following those false preachers, false teachers, following all those wicked, wrong Bible, more likely than not, you never have assurance of salvation. Right. How do you know? Because I was one of you. Uh -huh. Yeah. I was using NIV, never opened it. You know, didn't know there were missing verses. Right. Never had assurance of salvation, even though I accepted Christ every week, not knowing what am I doing, right? After praise and worship for two hours, right? Five-minute Bible study, receive Christ, okay. Wow. And if someone tells, you, tells me, do you know where you're going after you die? I don't know. I, I hope I'm going to heaven because I prayed after a prayer, right? Nothing. You will never have any type of assurance if you don't believe in the word of God. And you have very good chance that devil has deceived you, that you won't get saved. Yes. Do you know why people still do get saved, though? People always ask this smart aleck question. Do you mean that people use NIV, NASB, New King James, every other Bible, that's not King James Bible, that they can't get saved? No, they can get saved. Amen. You know why? Their seed is from the King James Bible. Yes. That's why there's still truth there, some yes. truth. That's why they, can't, they still can get saved. But if 100 people can get saved by clear salvation plan, only few will get saved. Mm -hmm. Right? Because they're going to be confused. Yes. 
Because some of the verses, they, I mean, they deny deity of Jesus Christ, they right? Yes. They deny existence of hell, yes. right? They deny rightly dividing the word of truth, yes. right? I mean, they're saying, you know, devil is God, Jesus yeah. Christ, you know. I mean, all those things are there. Then you need to have final authority. That's right. Yes. Stop not believing in the word of God. Come on. That first step, you have to believe the word of God, yes. right? We're born again through the word of God, Amen. right? You know, incorruptible. Yes. But Amen. there are a lot of corruptible versions. Yes. And it's up to you. Because no one will have, ever have excuse. And so that's point number one, right? Many church goals are, many church goals will burn in hell because they don't believe in the perfect word of God. And secondly, many church goers will burn in hell because they don't believe in hell. Yeah. Literally, it's the, they call it oxymoron, right? Like a giant shrimp, right? Tiny whale, right? <laughs> you know, opposites. You say you go to church, but you don't believe in hell? I mean, that's like the biggest oxymoron, yeah. right? And if you minus oxy, you become the other one, right? right? <laughs> and then you're going to end up in hell like that, right? Yeah. But there's reason, you know. It could be amusing to, you know, some of us. But it's very serious. There's reason why many churchgoers don't believe in literal burning hell, right? Because devil doesn't want people to believe it. That's it. Devil will be there for all eternity. Amen. But he wants to bring as many people with him yes, to hell. He so what's the best way to do it? Make that place sound like party, yes. right? And they've gotten so many young people this day and age. Hey, it's okay. I'll go to hell. I'll party with my friends. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. you know, I'll go to hell. I have a drinking buddy already there. You know, my grandma, grandpa's there. You know, they were alcoholics. You know, they cussed Jesus Christ. But you know what? If I can't see him in heaven, then I'm going to go to hell. You know, devil has completely brainwashed minds of young people, many people who just watch TV, who's going to, you know, so-called just religious organizations, yes. and they don't believe in literal hell, yeah. right? They think it's grave. I mean, last time I checked, grave doesn't burn, no. right? They think you just turn into nothing. Last time I checked, yeah. man, that rich man was burning, yeah, and he was feeling Amen. the fire, your right? He was thirsty, yes. right? He felt everything. Torment. I mean, it's a real place. But we go to point number one. What does devil do? Devil changed the word of God. Yes. Yeah. So hell's not really real to people anymore, mm -hmm. right? But I'll share some verses where new versions change the meaning, right? In Job 26.6, Hell is naked before him, and destruction has no covering. So NIV turned it into, death is naked before God. Destruction lies uncovered. Oh, what is it? This is hell we're talking about. Yes. Death? You just die and you're done. Not the same. But in hell, you just burn forever and ever. Deuteronomy 30 to 22. This is a really good verse because it tells you the levels of hell. You know, don't worry, people. God is fair even in hell. God will, I guess, there's levels of hell where you will be more wicked. You'll burn in deeper hell. You know, you'll feel more punishment. So, you know, don't worry. I mean, people always say, is God fair, you know? When these serial killers out there, you know, just living a normal life and getting away with No, they're not going to get away with it. There's a place called hell. Amen. I mean, if you ever been wronged by anybody, any organization in the world, don't you want to believe in a just God, perfect God? Yes. Right? But he's there, you know. And that created the universe in us to save people. Lord Jesus Christ. 
Amen. Why would you not believe in the perfect word of God? Right. Looking at justice at wrong places, right? Yes. Judicial system, they miss a lot of people, right? You know, vigilantes, I mean, what, you're going to leave it up to vigilantes? No, you leave it up to perfect God who j- judges most perfectly, yes. right? Amen. So Deuteronomy 32, 22 King James Bible says, For a fire is kindled in mine anger, and shall burn unto the lowest hell. So, hell has levels. Lowest hell. I mean, that's why like Jesus Christ, when he was talking to Pharisees and Sadducees, right? You know, they're going to be burning in lower hell, right? And shall consume the earth with her increase. So, hell's going to enlarge, right? Yes. And set on fire the foundations of the mountains. New International Version. For a fire has been kindled by my wrath, one that burns to the realms of death below. Death below? It doesn't scare me. No. It doesn't even touch me, right? But when the Bible says, you know, shall burn unto the lowest hell, I don't want to go there, you know? You know why people, like church people don't get saved? Because preachers will not preach from the first perfect word of God. Even in their wicked versions, they don't want to talk about it. Yeah. I mean, Jesus Christ came to save who? Sinners. Yes. From where? Hell. I mean, eternal lake of hell. Yes. So how can preachers not preach about hell? I mean, during the days of Philadelphia and age, as we're learning in Revelation, I mean, I'm pretty sure when there's a tent meeting for you know, when Pastor Kobo said they had like 40 days, I'm sure they had 10 meetings for half a year, right? <laughs> you know, like a whole half a year you just consume with the Word of God. Half a year you work so hard, you know, in between. I mean, you're you going to hear, yes. you know, hellfire preaching yes. over and over. That's why people just come to the altar sobbing and get saved. Yes. I mean, you don't even have to ask. Right. People just want to get saved from hell. Amen. Yeah, because that's, that's real. You know, nowadays you got to pull out a teeth for somebody like, man, please don't burn in hell. You're like, you know, you know, you're sitting like this. Oh, should I? Should I not? You know, you're not even serious. Are you even serious about getting safe from hell? Come on. I mean, if, with that kind of attitude, how do you know if your heart is right? Yeah. It's like, oh, you know what? I'll make you feel better. So I'll accept Christ. Right. You know, I'll make you feel better. Right. You know, oh, you know what? You're nagging me. Right. I don't want you to talk to me anymore. I don't, know. I don't believe in hell, but you know what? You know, I'll just repeat after a prayer. Wow. Think about it. We've talked to thousands, if not tens of thousands of people during our ministry out on the street. Many people, we've seen, we've seen many people who try to just get rid of it because they're kind of nice people, yeah. so they can't really say no to you. Mm-hmm. And then they just go through the whole you know, nine yards, and then they're like, okay, okay, okay. And then you ask them. Now, how do you know, you know you're going to get out of hell? Oh, I go to church. Can you believe it? They answer the same thing. That's how you check people anyways, right? After you lead them, you know, make sure you have follow-up questions. And reading all these wicked versions, if I'm even them, I wouldn't, I'm not scared of hell. I don't even believe in hell like that because more verses... In Psalms 18, Psalms 9-7, I mean, this is one of the you know, verses that we use even street preaching. Psalms 9-7 says, The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. Yeah. NIV goes, The wicked return to the grave, all the nations that forget God. Yeah. Whether you're wicked, whether you're good, you're going to go to the grave, yeah. right? I mean, what truth is in there? When you are eliminating hell. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's why, you know, certain religions confidently t- say to you, there's no hell. There's paradise. And you just go to the grave. And they, they use these verses right from their Bible. Right? New Living Translation. Right? You know, if you, who, if you know who uses them, you know who I'm talking about, right? Mm-hmm. And they always have certain 
backup scriptures, and they get it from all of their, you know, wrong versions. And then Proverbs 5.5 5 says, her feet go down to death. Her steps take hold on hell. New version says, her feet go down to death. Her steps lead straight to the grave. They change all of the hell, a lot of them, to grave and death. Yes. I have to face death if the Lord doesn't come back early. Right. So, I mean, that's the same as everybody. Yes. But, if I don't trust Christ as my Lord and Savior, I'm going to face hell. Yes. Amen. Man, that is eternally different. Yes. And that's why newer versions, people who use it, but when I come to think about it, I mean, you know, brethren, you think about it too, you know, before you got saved, before you, you know, you knew the truth, if you knew, before you knew King James Bible. I was going to other church. I don't think I was ever really scared of hell. You know, I wasn't, it wasn't like really, really real to me, right? First of all, they never talked about it, literally. Yeah. Even if I read it somewhere, it's like, oh, yeah, God loves me. Jesus loves me. You know, I mean, I'm most likely I'm not going to burn in hell. I mean, many, many church goers, that's their stand. Yeah. Most likely I'm not going to burn in hell. God is love, right? You know. And then certain religions will say, there is no hell. Hell is death. Hell is the grave. No, hell is a literal burning fire. Yes. Yeah. You're going to look like the devil, right? You're going to be like, you know, the old serpent. You're going to be like a worm there. Right. Yeah, don't worry. You know, you're going to be a year of your father, the devil. Yes. Yeah, John chapter 8. Yeah. You're going to just look like him. And you will remember Anybody, whether it's this message or anybody who witnessed to you or you heard the gospel, you're going to keep on reminded. Yes. And in hell, you're going to regret it. Man, I should have listened. I should have listened. And then just a few more verses that they change, right? In Isaiah verse 14, uh, chapter 14, verse 15, it says, Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the size of the pit. But you are brought down to the grave, to the depths of the pit. Oh, I, I'm not scared. Oh, I mean, I'm not scared. If a grave, yeah. We all have to go there one day, right? And then, you know, even in Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 5, who enlarges his desire as hell? Because he is as greedy as the grave. Uh, you know, there's like no real meaning, there's like, you don't really understand. There's no fear of God in people. And many times it's because people use the wrong version. Yes. And then finally, quickly, why many church goals are on their way to hell? Even though they believe in the Bible, some people do, but they don't have the right knowledge. That's why. Like, many people, they say, oh, I believe in the Word of God. And suddenly you get attached to, you know, book of Revelation, right? And you don't know the right doctrine. And you're like, you know what? People, we have to eat the tree of life. You know, that's how you have eternity. I mean, they, they, they somehow read Revelation 22, 14. They're like, I need that tree of life, you know? Just like Adam and Eve. I mean, they believe the word of God, but they don't have the right knowledge. They're not rightly dividing the word of truth. Yes. That's not many church goers. If you're going to the wrong church, you're going to burn in hell. Get out. Without the right doctrine. Right. right? I mean, some people, I mean, some KJV only, they become like a super duper dispensational, <laughs> right? They're like, you have to believe in Jesus Christ, whether in Old Testament or New Testament. Right? They're saying, Jesus saved back in Old Testament. Oh, yeah? Where in the Bible says it? Right? right? They start creating things. Yeah. They just, like, okay, you know, everything's by grace. Everything's by grace, right? So regardless of ages, right? Even great tribulation, Old Testament, transitional time, you know, it's all by grace, right? You know, 
<laughs> and then they, they just have the wrong doctrine. They don't have the right doctrine. And then they're going to end up in hell. Yeah. Right now in church age, for by grace are ye saved through faith. Amen. And then not of yourself, it is a gift of God, not of works that any man should boast. Amen. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. Amen. That's it. Yes. In our church age, that's the only way you could go to heaven. Simple. Very simple. Yes. Yes. You don't have to do anything. Amen. Right? It's simple as that. But if you get messed up, you know, like Calvinism, right? Yes. Arminianism, get charismatics, you know, you know, yes. work by salvation, like, you know, MacArthur's and stuff. Yes. You know, then even though you go to church very sincerely, you're going to burn in hell very sincerely. Amen. Let's go to Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. There are many people, that's, that breaks my heart because they don't have the wrong motive. You know, they have the right motive. They want to serve God. You know, they want to do what the Bible says. But they can't get out of the wrong teaching, right. wrong understanding. At the end of the day, though, their pride is stopping them yes. from choosing the right thing. Right. Because God will, God's fair. Yes. God's going to show you the truth. It's up to you to get out of it. I know it could be super hard. You've been in that wrong religion for 40 years. It's going to be almost impossible. But you know what? Who do you want to listen to? You want to listen to God? You want to listen to the Word of God? Or you want to listen to your elders, right? Oh, man. Why is it that like all those, everybody's an elder, you know, everybody's a you know, priest everywhere, right? You know, listen to the Word of God. Amen. Romans chapter 10. You know, Apostle Paul, think about it. This guy, he'll rather burn in hell if his nations could get saved, Jewish people. That's how much love he had for, you know, his own people. I mean, us, I don't know how much love you have for lost souls out there. I mean, this person, Apostle Paul, he would rather be damned so that his people can get saved. I mean, that's type of, you know, you know, zeal that you and I and love we should have for the lost souls out there. Let's look at verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Verse 2, this is what's happening in many churches. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Yes. Many church goers don't have the right knowledge. They have so much zeal. I mean, yeah. you know, one of the nicest people are the people that I met are people who stand on the corners five hours a day trying to meet their quotas, right? They're professional, they work hard, you know, they do those things. But they believe for the wrong reasons. I met some, you know, good young man, you know, riding their bicycle everywhere, right? I mean, compared to like certain, you know, kids who grew up in this public school system, I mean, well, they're good people. I mean, good, I mean, good young people. Yes. But there are, they have the wrong knowledge. Yes. They have the right zeal, and they're on their way to hell. Yes. So many churchgoers, unfortunately, will end up in hell because they have the zeal, they are sincere, but with the wrong knowledge. Then as a Bible believer, you know, if you have the right knowledge, you know, where's your zeal? Right, brother? I mean, where's your love for the lost souls out there? Yes. Right? I mean, these people... They're on their way to hell, but they have the zeal trying to save people from hell. Yeah, right. Unfortunately, they're going to go there together. Yes. But they're doing something. But what are you doing? Are you just staying at home, looking at YouTube, looking for conspiracy theories all the time? That's good. Just grow your wrong knowledge. I mean, some of them are right knowledge, but you just grow knowledge, 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 and don't do anything? Good conviction. And that's nothing. Yes. You gotta have balanced life. Amen. You have to learn the word of God and you also have to be out there. Amen. You can't do anything at home, I tell you that. Yeah. You have to be out there. Yes. You know, good old saying. You gotta not only talk the talk, you gotta walk the walk. Amen. And if you know what's right to do and you don't do it, James says it's sin. Yeah. yeah. So you know it's the right thing to do to pass out tracts, share the gospel. 
right thing to do to stand for the Word of God, right thing to do to stand for King James Bible, right thing to do, you know, get angry when you see sin, right? Don't be like stale, right? If someone's, you know, harboring against Israel like that, you know, as a spiritual Jew yourself, you should get angry. Amen. I mean, why would you let them just blabber all the time, you know? I mean, you want to be blessed by God? You know, bless Israel. Yes. You want to be cursed by God? You know, curse Israel. Right. And as a Bible-believing Christian, we should never be on the other side, yeah. right? We should always be blessing. And again, there are many churchgoers. They're on their way to hell. I mean, what are you doing about it, right? And you know the, some of the reasons, right? They don't believe in the perfect Bible. They don't believe in hell. They have the wrong doctrines and teachings, right? Yes. But you can do something about it. Amen. Because you have eternal life. You have the right Bible. Yes. And you have the right doctrine. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. It's like you have all this good stuff. Amen. Are you going to be selfish and greedy and just keep it to yourself? You know? I mean, you got to share it. Yes. I mean, all the false preachers are sharing all of their wicked knowledge, yeah. right? That's true. I mean, they're doing all this wicked stuff, doing their sharing. Yeah. Bible believers have to do your own sharing. Amen. You know, and then it starts with the perfect word of God. Amen. Thank God for that. Yeah. Let's not forget all these souls, church goers on their way to hell. Let's pray. Dear Father. Many, many, many churchgoers are on their way to hell. And what are we doing about it? We know it's happening, and we see it around us all the time. Do we really have zeal and love for those lost souls out there? Help us to understand and help us to really realize where we came from. We were one of them on our way to hell, but you have blessed us so much with the right Bible, right doctrine, right church. Why are we becoming hoarders, Lord? Help us be out there preaching the word. Help us be out there to lost soul out there. You know, who needs the light, Lord? And I pray that we not do this for our glory or for our pride, but do it for you, for your glory, and because our love for you, Lord. I pray that you'll bless the rest of the services today. I pray that you heal those who are not doing well. I pray that, number one, Lord, you come quickly, Lord. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.